I'd like to welcome you to today's edition of the Provost Conversations on Teaching and Learning. Here we are across campus from where we're usually meeting, which is over in the law library, although we have Ginny O'Haran here. I'm glad that she's here. Uh, we are in the Gregory A. Lumsden Trading Room and Research Lab, and we'll learn more about that from our, our uh, conversation leader in just a few minutes. Today, Mohammed Najang of the Department of Finance will lead us in a conversation entitled The Application of Bloomberg Terminals to Business Education. Dr. Najan joined ODU's Department of Finance in 1987. He teaches the junior and senior courses in investments and leads PhD seminars in finance. His recent research focus on tests of asset pricing models, the trade-off between risk and return in financial markets and models of forecasting volatility in financial models. This afternoon, he will show us firsthand how Bloomberg Education brings the real world of finance into the classroom. A room such as this one can expose students to industry-leading Bloomberg professional service and give them an edge when they enter the workplace. Students can enhance research and class assignments while they learn to analyze financial markets. A room like this can help them assess economic scenarios and interpret developments that, that can impact the local economy. This room doesn't just help the students of finance. The terminals also provide in-depth information in other disciplines, including healthcare and pharmaceuticals, supply chain management, energy, agriculture, journalism, government, economics, public policy, and law. That's all. A lot of different <laughs> disciplines. It's a lot of information in here, yes. It is. So we hope you enjoy today's uh, session with Dr. Nijan, and uh, I'm pleased to present to you Dr. Mohammed Nijan. Thank you very much. Thank I appreciate you. it. Thank you for your kind uh, introduction. Um, before I get started, let me introduce to you Mr. Andrew Korn. Uh, Andrew is uh, the manager for the room, and uh, he received his uh, MBA from NYU, was hired by uh, um, um, uh, Goldman Sachs. Uh, he was a top trader for 15 years in New York, and uh, at the young age, he decided to retire. And uh, he's made, he had made a lot of money. He said, I'm going to go to Virginia Beach, play volleyball on the beach. <laughs> and uh, he came down here. Uh, we occasionally used him for a course in MBA program to teach trading. Uh, once this room was built, we were fortunate to grab him. We promised him that um, we're not going to make him to work 80 hours a week. Um, it's only 65 hours. <laughs> and uh, also, we also promised him that he is not under pressure to make any trades and make any money for, for us. And he uh, accepted the job, and uh, we are fortunate to have him here. Later on, he will talk about the application of Bloomberg terminals to other areas than finance. My focus, to a large extent, is going to be on finance, but we both we would be happy to answer any questions. Um, let me also start by saying that this room is, uh, is uh, fully funded by Mr. Gregory Lonsom, who was here with his family last week here. And uh, we are fortunate to have uh, a donor that uh, totally be, uh, paid for this room. Uh, so the room is, the, the wall over there is going to be covered by his name. It's going to be Gregory uh, Lonsom Trading Room and Research Lab. Um, I want to start the, uh, the conversation today on why would you need a trading room? Uh, what is a trading room? One of the things that a trading room would, would bring uh, to any school is, is authenticity. When the students come or walk into this room, they know that they are in the middle of it. There is, uh, this is some tool that professionals use, the real world use. It. And it's going, it is a great learning tool because you are connected to global markets. You are connected to professionals. And that is, the, that is very valuable for, uh, for students. We also, um, uh, the, you know, the tool here, the Bloomberg terminals, are going to be bridging the gap between what we teach in the classrooms and what is out there. And uh, many times or often the businesses uh, criticize business schools for not providing graduates who are 
prepared to walk into, into, into the business and start working there. They have to train them and so on. This place would, 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 you know, would bring a, a great, uh, would, would actually uh, uh, would, uh, give students a very good uh, uh, learning experience. And of course, it is a high-tech atmosphere that attracts a lot of uh, attention. The students like this type of things. They are, the other day, um, we had freshman previews, and I, I saw them. They lined up behind the glass door. They were all looking through this, this room, trying to figure out what this room is. And that attraction, that excitement itself, I think it is it's quite important for, uh, for teaching and learning. And finally, uh, an important uh, feature of this room is that it is cutting edge. Uh, education that you find uh, a handful of schools, well, uh, more than a handful of schools, but the schools uh, are started to realizing that how important the, this, this type of technology is for student learning. So these are the reasons that we, uh, we have this trading room and uh, hopefully uh, you, know, you, you also would explore what is in here. Um, Going around the country, there are about 240 rooms uh, like this around the country. And uh, you can go to that uh, website right here. If you actually uh, get to the website, you'll see ODU on the map. Uh, and in Virginia, we have William and Mary, VCU, University of Richmond, as uh, the other schools that, uh, UVA, the other schools that have this room. Um, <clears throat> The goal of this room is to replicate what is happening on Wall Street, or what's happening on Wall Street when you are a professional uh, trader or you are a money manager. This is the tool you're going to be using. If you watch CNBC or if you watch Bloomberg uh, Channel, you all see these terminals behind them. That's exactly the terminals that, that you see there. So that is uh, one goal of this room is to, uh, to uh, replicate Wall Street. Uh, to uh, connect to you to, to the markets, the schools was, would use different technology, uh, the different uh, data services. Bloomberg is, is the main one, and that's the one we use here. Some schools use IQ or um, uh, Morningstar and so on. The, what we have here is uh, the heart of our trading room here is the Bloomberg terminals. Uh, we also have some simulations uh, software that are loaded into a system here, and you could uh, uh, explore them as well. So again, as I said, uh, the heart of uh, our room here is, is Bloomberg terminals. And um, why Bloomberg terminals are important? Uh, oh, I'm sorry. Before I get to that, this uh, chart shows that uh, how these tr uh, trading rooms have grown over years, and you probably see the effect of recession right here, okay? And, uh, but, uh, you know, they started picking up, and, and you see how important that those rooms have become in, in education. In this room, we have 24 uh, Bloomberg terminals uh, that are uh, connected, to, uh, uh, connected to, to, to the system, to the network, and you can directly uh, uh, access data. There, this room is among the largest in the country. Uh, if you go to William and Mary, they have 18 Bloomberg terminals. We have 24 in here. Uh, my daughter is at UVA, and she was saying they have four of those. Uh, uh, so uh, anyhow, uh, this is uh, probably one of the most, the largest in the country. Uh, <clears throat> so what is the significance of Bloomberg terminals? I stole this quote from the dean, he goes around and he, he tells people about this. Uh, but uh, who else except that Secretary of State saying that anybody who works for a uh, State Department should uh, read uh, Foreign Affairs and be familiar with Bloomberg Terminals. Uh, that is uh, that's quite powerful. Okay. If you look at the keyboards here, the keyboards um, are different than the normal keyboards. Uh, they have, uh, they, we have got yellow key, the, the yellow set of keys in there that are the most important key, uh, keys here. These keys would take you directly to, uh, to, to the market sector. For instance, uh, we have a corporate, uh, if you uh, press corporate, it would take you to corporate sector, commodity, uh, foreign uh, exchange, uh, government, law, or so on. So any of these keys that you see here, 
would would take you directly to the, those particular markets and data. Uh, Bloomberg is expanding that, uh, and it be good, pretty soon we're going to have a health sector added to this, and uh, uh, so it is. Uh, it is. It's quite uh, uh, powerful, uh, an easy way to get into the, those uh, uh, those those uh, sectors. As I looked across the country, that see what uh, courses. Uh, uh, integrate Bloomberg in their classes. I came across a lot of courses. I know it is uh, hard to read here, but there are, there are very uh, many courses uh, uh, going from accounting to finance to economics to decision sciences to statistics uh, to simulation and modeling. So you go, you go across uh, the country, you'll see that these courses are using, um, these schools are using uh, Bloomberg's. The question is that what is the benefits to benefits of this, these terminals to, to our students? Uh, obviously, it would enhance their learning. Uh, they are uh, they at the terminals they can do analysis that they weren't able to do before. With the, this, with these terminals, they have access to real market data, and they can perform analysis that, as I said, we weren't able to do it before. To contribute. Uh, integration of theory and practice. In the classrooms, we teach them theories, and um, they really have no idea how to apply that theory. And this is the place that they can apply that theory and see exactly what happens uh, to, to the markets, uh, to the model they have. Uh, one of the important models is uh, in finance is, uh, for instance, is a security market uh, line that was uh, developed by Professor Sharp, who got a Nobel Prize for it. In the classrooms, we teach them this model. We show them nice graphs. And then we tell them some numbers, plug into equation to see what the answer is. Um, but they have no idea exactly where this, this In this place, they can pull the live data, put in the model, and exactly to see what, you know, that I'd show you, hopefully I'll show you examples of like that in a moment. Um, also, to, uh, for faculty to become innovators, you, um, uh, you know, given the tool you have here, you could, as a faculty member, we could develop courses. One of the courses that we have integrated into this classroom is called Student Managed Fund that I'm going to talk about it in, in a moment. Uh, but the other day, for instance, I got an email from a professor in uh, computer science who says that I would like to work on a course. Uh, it's called High Performance uh, Financial uh, Computing, and I like to collaborate with finance department to, you know, to have uh, uh, our students and, uh, you know, business school students to take this course together to, to learn Bloom how Bloomberg does that, so in terms of programming of it. Uh, so it, it is, uh, you know, it, it is, uh, it's, it's quite, uh, quite important that uh, we, would, we would expand beyond, beyond this college and, and get into interdisciplinary uh, courses. Uh, this room also, these terminals would also provide a focal point for research. Uh, about two years ago, one of my PhD students uh, uh, read an article in Barron's about uh, Chinese companies coming over to the U.S. and buying small companies in the U.S. And that is called a reverse mortgage. And he wanted to write his dissertation on this. He could not find data on that. Uh, so he contacted the reporter at Barron's, and, and the reporter said that the source would be Bloomberg. So this student uh, drove to William and Mary, and that's where he got his MBA. He was able to access the terminal and get the data for his dissertation in one day. Uh, so that is how powerful these terminals are. Uh, one time I asked a student, in your mind, um, what is Bloomberg? He says, Bloomberg can find me things that Google cannot find. And that is probably true, because you'll find uh, quite a lot of information here. Uh, a recent study, a uh, survey, that was done on application of Bloomberg professional uh, services found that the main reason the students like these uh, terminals is that all the information they, they want is one, one place, 42 percent of the students say that's the most important thing to them, 
which the t terminals provide to them. And of course, quality of information and quantity of information are, are important, and they all, that's what the students uh, mentioned in the survey. Now, what benefits uh, these terminals would bring to, or Bloomberg services would, be, would bring to employers? Um, we, um, one of our students is hired by a, a local uh, money manager company, a wealth uh, manager, managing company, and he's the only one who can use the Bloomberg terminals. And uh, all, of, all of the 20 people in the firm, they all go to him, and uh, he, you know, he learned this, this, this over here. I have a student right now who is also having an internship with a local, uh, uh, a local firm, and uh, he is actually teaching them how to use Bloomberg terminals. So um, that is, you know, that is uh, quite powerful a tool to be able to, to perform this. Also, Bloomberg uh, provides a certification program for students. Uh, students, if they watch four videos and then take a test, uh, plus a core, take a test, and if they pass, they get a certification. That certification would go, you know, they could put it on their, on their VITA, on their resume, and that is, uh, should, you know, that could be another uh, factor that could land them a job. Bloomberg is not just in finance, as you see, it's in medicine, law, political science, education, journalism, environmental science, and more. There are 40,000 functions in these terminals. So um, it, is, it would take quite a long, long time to learn it all. Um, I'm not sure anybody can learn it all. But uh, you, know, you can focus on your area and, uh, and it, you know, you, you learn that it is, it's quite easy to use once you get used to it. As I said, uh, Bloomberg is developing uh, a, a healthcare sector that they bring it together pharmaceutical data uh, related to clinical trials, the drug uh, uh, consumption, and uh, you, know, all, all of, you know, all of things related to ph the pharmaceutical industry in one place, and that could be uh, quite useful for people who are doing research in this area. He also has uh, a Bloomberg law uh, that uh, uh, you, you'll see um, all the cases that are going through uh, the course in the United States, you can find them all in here. I was talking to a manager at uh, William and Mary, the room manager there, and he says our law students uh, use this room or these terminals as much as our business students. Because there, any, you know, any piece of information on law that you want or you're looking for, you'll find it here. So it's much more than finance uh, uh, and economics. Now I want to turn your attention to th this, the, the course I was talking to you about. It's a student managed fund, and that course is very much integrated in here. This is an innovative course that uh, brings the students uh, to a place that they can do analysis on the stock, they can select the stocks, they can form portfolio, and um, deal with real money. Uh, that is another thing that we, you know, we used to tell, we used to give the students in the beginning of semester in an investment class that you have $100,000 to invest, go invest it, and tell us you know, what you did at the end of semester. The student managed investment fund is quite different. It's a real money that they are, they are investing, they do all analysis that a professional money manager would do, the stock analyst would do. Uh, it would be, uh, you know, you use a seminar setting, such as this room, to, to, to conduct a class, li a class like this. So as I said, the, the course offers the students uh, a, real, uh, a, 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 you know, a, a real experience with investing real dollars. They go through all, everything that a firm would do. Uh, they would uh, de determine, you know, they would decide what sectors of the economy they're going to invest. They would decide what companies they're going to invest. Then they would decide how to manage that portfolio. Uh, according to a survey that was done in 2004, there are 61 student managed funds in, in the country, ranging from, you know, as low as $30,000 investment to $23 million uh, at the University of Wisconsin at Madison. Uh, at ODU, 
we started this class back in uh, uh, year 2010. It, uh, we, we received money from a donor for $250,000 to start the class. Initially, it was, you know, it was, it was hard to get this, the class started because we didn't have bylaws, we didn't have a system to really put the money to, to use. So it took us some time, by spring of 2010, we invested the first part of the money that was uh, given to class, and that was $30,000 we invested back then. One of the issues we had, the problems we had before we got this room, was that how do I, um, how do I follow my portfolio, you know? We had to develop worksheets that are, uh, or spreadsheets that are connected to the web, pulls the data from the web, and you know, tells you, for instance, how much you have in your portfolio. Or if you wanted to do stock analysis, uh, an important uh, model in finance is called dividend discount model. The dividend discount model uses a lot of data, and so we had to, we had to go to different websites to pull that data into the model. And it was, you know, sometimes the websites move, and the data is now, the links are broken, so things did not, it work as well as, as we anticipated. The, the, you know, the, the picture is really different now with, with, with this room. Uh, the class uh, is divided into two groups. There are portfolio manager and the stock analyst. The portfolio managers are, are the ones that are really enthusiastic and passionate about a portfolio. They want to make money for all of you, all right? And um, the stock analysts uh, are the ones that are performing, are, are they, go, they, they do their research, and, and they come present it to the class. The class as a whole makes a decision as whether to buy the stock or not. Um, it's, you know, it's stock analysis that the students did, you know, in previous semesters, uh, before we had this room, it would take us at least, you know, a week to perform one or two stock analysis. Um, last, uh, you know, this past Monday night, we, we went over six stocks here and we, we purchased one of them. Uh, the, the, you know, this is totally different than what we used to be, you know. It, it's just amazing how things are, are, are much more efficient and easier to do. In this type of classes, what is the role of the professor here? Is the professor uh, uh, is, is a sage on the, on, on the stage or it's going to be the guide on the side? And in this type of rooms, the professors are the guide on the side. Uh, we, I, I provide guidance. I help them with, uh, you know, with uh, uh, definitions, with, you know, understanding what the data means, but the decision is with them. Uh, I let them vote, uh, and it is total democracy here as to, you know, what stocks to buy or not. Um, the course is offered every semester, and uh, the current value of that portfolio, I'll show you in a moment. You remember that we started with $250,000 back in uh, spring of 2010. Um, <clears throat> by the way, the managers and a couple of analysts from this class are at the RISE conference. This conference is in Dayton, Ohio. It's set up by, it's co uh, it is co-sponsored by United Nations. The students uh, that are involved in classes like this, the Student Managed Investment Fund, they come together and they have uh, leaders uh, in industry as well as uh, uh, this, time, this, this time they have presidents of uh, Federal Reserve Banks. As, uh, so they go through workshops, they you know, learn from the other schools what they do. Uh, previous years they used to come and say that you should see University of Dayton. They have a trading room. They have Bloomberg terminals. Uh, but now this year, we, we have that. So they can go and brag over, about all this. Now, the interesting thing I want to tell you about this RISE conference, we had sent the students to RISE conference before. But uh, we were poor. We rented a car, a, a van, and we, we put them in the van, and they went over there. Um, this year, they withdrew profit, a part of profit from the fund. And uh, we bought them uh, tickets. Uh, we still, you know, put them on airplane. They are over there right now. Uh, and uh, we got them registered. We got them I don't know, hotel rooms and fully paid for them. That's coming out of their, their fund. Uh, so I'm, I'm happy that we are able to do that for them. 
Okay, um, I want to show you a little bit of the live version of the portfolios, things that you can do with this that we were not able to do. Um, so let me take you to, uh, to Bloomberg, and this is the probably exciting part of that. One of the things they can do in the class, they can see the portfolio every minute and how much money we have in there. You probably can't see up here, but it's $395,000 right now. And we withdrew, remember, $7,000 for their trip, <laughs> okay? Um, they have currently $77,000 in cash, um, probably more money than the whole college for travel budget, right? <laughs> okay. Um, and the reason they are um, sitting on a lot of cash right now is because they believe, as a class, they believe this stock market has gone up maybe too far. And maybe we should be conservative and s they sold some stocks and they're waiting for opportunity to, to get back to that. Um, so re remember one of the issues we had, we really at any, any point, given time, we, can't, we couldn't really say that how much exactly what we have in the, you know, in the market and where it is. Now with Bloomberg, all, all they have to do is get to these screens, <coughs> and it tells you, for example, at this, I'm, I'm not sure you can see this very well, but it tells you that the fund is, uh, how much the fund is, is up today, and what sectors, what particular sectors are doing well. Uh, for instance, uh, uh, the sector that's not very doing very well today is healthcare, and it takes you to the healthcare sector, and these are the stocks we own in there. The one that's doing very well is, uh, Alexion right now, but on the other healthcare stocks, we're not doing very well. Uh, then you can go to any particular, uh, like financials. And financials, we are doing, we are up today. We are up today by, by uh, $5 or 35 cents in that sector. But anyhow, that, these are the things that they can do that they couldn't do before. Um, one of the nice things uh, that we discuss in, in the class is that, um, by the way, you can, you can click on any of these sectors that we have our money in there, and it tells you what stocks we own and where they are. And again, up, up to minutes, uh, up to seconds of uh, updated information on them. One of the, uh, the issues, uh, that one of the interesting things about this is that we actually look at the scenario analysis. We think about you know, what happens if something goes wrong? What would happen to our portfolio? Uh, Bloomberg has this uh, scenario analysis that I can choose any particular scenario. For example, if I look at uh, Lehman Brothers, uh, what happened in uh, September 2008, I would know that my portfolio would fall by $50,000 if that happens. And um, that's about 12% of our investments. Then I can go down to particular stock and tell you exactly what happens to each stock based on what happened here. Uh, one of uh, the interesting things one of the students was looking at was what happens if uh, the Russian crisis happened, uh, the financial crisis, and they, they brought up this screen. If, if the uh, Russian financial crisis happens, we're going to lose $45,000 in portfolio. And one of the stocks that's going to lose most money would be Coach, okay? And apparently Russians like Coach products, right? So that would have a major effect on, on, on our portfolio. Another uh, sector that would be highly affected is the energy sector, uh, because we have a stock flip 66 that if the Russian, Russian crisis happened, it would go down by 33% based on these scenarios. So they, they can choose any scenario and they can look at uh, what would happen to our portfolio, things that are totally uh, uh, unbelievable. One of, uh, you know, one, one interesting thing they did last semester, and I'm very proud of, you know, the process they, they did this, was they looked at a stock called uh, Arms Holdings. Uh, Let me tell you a little bit about the, back, the background about this stock. Well, that's not the one, I'm sorry. Yeah, one more down the US one. Yeah, okay. Okay, thank you. That's the one, right? Okay. Um. <clears throat> they, 
they were looking for, for a stock that, um, you know, there was the competition between, um, uh, between Samsung and Apple computer was so, uh, was so t tense, and we really didn't know who was going to come out as a winner. So they were thinking that we should find a product that would supply to both of them. And they found this company called uh, Arms Holding. That company, if you look at the supply chain for that, they provide, um, uh, they, they, what, they, what they do is they provide software and uh, they provide it for Samsung as well as Apple, LG, and all those. Um, so they decided that you know, no matter who wins in this scenario, um, we're going to make money, okay? And uh, they purchased that stock around in September, around $22, $24 a year. So that's probably $24.91. It was around that time they purchased it. That was from the class from previous semester. The class this semester decided that this stock has grown so much and there is a potential for that to start taking uh, you know, a downturn. They sold it exactly, almost exactly at the top for $44. Um, you know, the, their analysis was right on the money. And uh, you know, I'm, I'm very proud of you know, what, what they did. Uh, also, you know, the, the another stock that they looked at uh, was Home Depot. We, we owned this stock, but we sold it. Um, what Bloomberg allows you is to look at the different events and the, should see the effect of that on the stock. For instance, you could add hurricanes to see what would happen to the value of this stock. <coughs> So these are different hurricanes that happen here. You can actually decide that what category of hurricanes you want to look at. So if we choose category four, we update the chart, we'll see that we had Sandy right here. Okay? So if you can zoom on this. It would show you how the stock initially when the storm hit took a dive, but then, you know, the market thought about people who lost, you know, their property, they need to be building up, and the stock took off, all right? So, you, you know, you, these are the type of things you can, you can do with this, uh, with this uh, Bloomberg terminals that you were never able to do. Um, let me show you another example of things we could do. Uh, <clears throat> Remember I told you about the dividend discount model? That is a model that uh, is used frequently in finance to value stock. That model has a lot of inputs that go into the model to calculate what the value of stock is. One of the, of course, important input is, is the dividends. The, the theoretical value of this stock is based on the model is $91. The current value of the stock is $70. So this stock, according to our theory or the, our models is, is undervalued. But you know, they figure out that the assumption that's used here, you can change any of the assumptions here and look at the stock value. They figure out that the long-term growth for, for, um, for, for uh, Home Depot is, shouldn't be 15, 15%, it should be somewhere around 12%. And you come up exactly what the value of the stock is right now, okay? $7.55. So, you know, these are the type of things that, that they can do and perform in this room. Um, another thing that, for instance, we teach them in finance is that, uh, you know, when you buy a stock and the stock, there's a stock split. Um, that should not affect the value of of the firm. So an example of that was, was uh, Citibank. We actually own Citibank. We don't own it anymore. But they had, uh, they had a reverse split. But if I can find it here. Uh, it's right here. C 
Citibank had a reverse split Okay, uh, had a reverse split that happened here, okay? And uh, you can actually click on that and see that they had this reverse split of 10 for one. We tell the students that in theory, when a company has a stock split, that should not have any val effect on the value of the firm. You can clearly see that that's not, you know, but the, the psychology of the market is different. People in the market think that, or investors think that if the company has a stock split, I should buy that stock, that, you know, that is not really the case. They can see that clearly. Another you know, scenario would be if you look at uh, Citibank ob obviously had a, lo a lot of class action suits. And you can see that the effect of that on the stock. You can click on any of this and it explains to you what happened and what happened to the suit. And you see how the stock took a dive due to all these uh, uh, lawsuits that was going on. Okay, um, another, before I turn th things to Andrew, I wanted to uh, show you another uh, function that is quite useful to students, and they look at the economic forecast release. Uh, in this calendar, they can see exactly what's happening today, what's coming up today, and tomorrow as well. Uh, for instance, uh, today we had initial uh, jobless claims that came out, it was more than expected, uh, the, you know, the continuing claims and so on. Tomorrow, there's going to be trade balance and you can click on any of them and it gives you, by the way, any, anything you see on the screen, any, any graph, anything, there is data behind that. So we can always download that data, we can always analyze it. Um, so they are, they are fully aware of what is happening to, uh, to to the economy. It's not just United States. If you click on this, you can browse the, the other countries. So you can even see what's come, going to come up in Afghanistan. Of course, that would be blank, I can tell you right now. But uh, I have tried that. But you can, you know, all over the world, for example, in Australia, uh, what is coming up there, right? What are the important macroeconomic uh, factors that, uh, or variables that are going to, going to come up? Another function in here is that is economic forecast. Uh, well, let's see if I can go to economic analysis and look at economic forecast. This, you know, this tool is great for students because they can see what the forecast for economy is. For instance, uh, this is from a, a mean forecast for 94 firms and uh, companies. They expect the market, uh, the GDP to grow at the rate of 1.9% in 2013, 2.7% in 2014, and 2015 at 290 you know, the, these economists believe the, mar the, eco the economy is going to grow at a very slow rate. They can look at what the Fed's forecast is. This is from, uh, uh, you know, from private economists. And the, you can see that the Fed is much more optimistic about the economy. They expect the economy to grow at 2.55% next year, the following, uh, this year, the following year by 3.15, and the day after that. And you'll see that the government is much more optimistic about uh, the um, unemployment. They expect by, the government expects by 2015, the unemployment to fall to 6.25%. Private economies are not as optimistic about this. Okay. <coughs> so these are great tools. Another important tool for students here, um, as I said, Andrew is going to show you a lot more here, is uh, jobs. Of course, students are, worried about jobs and they, uh, a feature in Bloomberg is that you build up your resume, you upload it into the system and then you look for, uh, for jobs that are available here. And you can actually uh, do search based on region, do search based on type of job you're looking for. Um, 
you can, if you don't know where these uh, places are, you can go to the map to see where the jobs are, okay? <laughs> For instance, there is a job in Bermuda, <laughs> okay? And um, it tells you exactly what they're looking for. Um, so there's actually three jobs in here. And so <coughs> in the United States, uh, a, a concentration of jobs in finance is going to be in, of course, Northern Virginia. So you can go there and There's Richmond here. There's actually, there are actually two jobs in Charlottesville if you're interested to live there. Uh, <coughs> this is Washington, D.C. And it tells you that the jobs that are there, okay? Um, you can actually click on that. It gives you all information that. Uh, one of the nice features about Bloomberg, once you build up your, your resume here, you can send it directly to people in there, all right? All these professionals, they, they have Bloomberg accounts. All right? So all you have to do is, is email them. Uh, so that's basically an overview of you know, how we use this terminal in this room for the time being. And I'm going to turn things to, over to Andrew. He is going to tell us more about application of these terminals to non-finance area. OK, thank you. Also, I want to let you know, too, that um, since we've um, opened up the room in the uh, beginning of November, basically in the beginning of the semester to 24 terminals, we've had an influx of students now logging in, and we're almost up to, we've had almost 700 students log in already now, and it's gone up dramatically over the last few months. And we're getting students from all parts of the campus, not just the finance area. We've had, for example, we have a big IT group going through here right now, and, you know, they had never, a lot of them have never seen much about finance and stock market, a lot of them now are so enthusiastic about it, you know, they're, they're definitely going to be interested in taking more courses in finance and also help them in their own, uh, you know, budgeting their own finances and learning about life in general. And again, the big thing that uh, uh, Mohammed alluded to is that take the theoretical and make it into the practical side of it, which Bloomberg does a great job of doing. And um, we've also had, a, I think we've had over 35 people now to become Bloomberg certified. Um, and again, that's going to grow a lot as the semester goes on because some of the courses we have are actually requiring them or as part of extra credit to become certified. So that's going to grow a lot more. And I think the students, because they see this, they love it. And this room is pretty amazing. It's a beautiful room. We're lucky to have it. And to have 24 terminals is one of the biggest um, labs in, you know, around the whole country. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take you through a couple of sc uh, screens that I find interesting for the students. I'm going to go across. I'm going to take you start in finance, take you away from finance a little bit. Um, one of the nice screens I like to start with for students is um, this screen here, which basically shows you the, mar the global, basically a global view of the overall of the markets. And I like this screen because it doesn't just tell you about what's happening in the United States, but all throughout the world. And it tells you based on currency, and you could customize this to anything you want. And one of the nice things about this is, let's say you don't know what the Bovespa is, okay? Just by putting your mouse over that, it'll tell you it's, uh, it's from Brazil, the Sao Paulo Exchange. And if you want to know more about it, you can simply right click and go to a description. There's a lot of other info. And it'll tell you everything you want to know about the Bovespa. So students coming in here, not knowing what some of these things are, it's not just a method of pulling data. It's also a great way to learn about it. Because everything that's on Bloomberg here, has a backup screen that tells you about it, so you can learn about it and learn and learn, you know, what it is and where it comes from. And again, all these things you can drill further into. If I want to look at a detailed chart, I can just click. It's interactive. I just double click it and it brings it up. And then, just like Mohammed showed, I could put events in this. I can put earnings. I can compare it to the S&P 500. Okay, so it's very interactive and, and makes sense. And going back into it, we'll talk a little about bit about the currencies. I'm going to go into that next. Notice this is in US dollar. So students can get a real feel for how their money's working if they're a US investor. Like if you're a US investor and you invest in the Nikkei, okay, the Nikkei is up 21, one of the biggest gainers, is up over 21% year to date, a huge move. But if we invested our dollars in there, because the yen has depreciated so much, the yen has depreciated about 12%, we'd only be up about 9.6% in US dollars terms, right? Because our dollars convert to yen when we invest. 
and then that depreciated so our gain isn't as much. And then if let's say we look at it from a Japanese investor standpoint, we could change this currency to anything we want. In this case, we're looking at the yen if we were a Japanese investor. And now the Japanese investors are pretty happy, right? Because if they invested in our market, our market's up about 11% year to date, but their yen becomes US dollars, which is appreciated by, again, about 12%, so they've gained 23%. So it also gives a little bit of a, uh, a rationale for why a lot of countries want to devalue their currency to boost exports and also to help, help their investments. Okay, so there's a lot of different reasons on that. And then, like we alluded to, I'm going to start going now away from finance a little bit. Um, if we go, we have a whole, Bloomberg has a whole giant platform on foreign exchange. So if I just hit a foreign exchange button on my keyboard, I have this whole main menu here, and I'll just go into the main, the main portals here. So this will give us a quick snapshot of where the, the, uh, each of the currencies trading versus the US dollar. And again, if I was in, in, um, in England or if I was in the, you know, I could look at the euro versus these country currencies. And you can see how the yen is. The yen is now about 96. And what's interesting to note for a US dollar invest, investor, uh, the Nikkei went up about 2.2% yesterday, but the yen depreciated by 3.3%. So if you US adopt, again, if you were a US investor investing in Japan, you'd actually have lost money yesterday, even though the Nikkei went up. And it also goes in from here. You can go into economics, give you the basic, again, some of the reasons why the currencies move and gives you know, GDP and CPI and unemployment rate, gives you a snapshot, and you can go further and delve into this. And then again, I'm going to start going to some other fields. I, had, I did a demo in, in healthcare um, for um, Gianluca. You're still here? Let's see. His, uh, oh, he's left. Okay, anyway. He had a, a bunch of PhD students come in who want to see what Bloomberg had to offer for their, for, um, their health sciences class. And Bloomberg, one of the things that's amazing, it has all these different industries that they devote, um, they devote about three or four industry experts on every one of these um, sub-industries, okay? for each sector. So for example, in his class, I went into healthcare. And I looked at a few different things that they were interested in. One was large pharmaceuticals. OK, this again, this is an overview page. And every one of these different sections has, dozen, has dozens of pages of information and charts. But let's just look at drugs, for example. We could do a drug search. And Bloomberg has every major drug in here. In this case, an order by sales, OK, retail sales, 1.36 billion. So this drug, simvastatin, is the most popular drug that's sold, OK? And we can, if we want to look at more info on this, for example, if I click the button right here, it's going to tell me everything about the drug. So again, this is more for the medical students. The description of it, the classes of it. OK, you can keep scrolling down what it does. OK, it's patent information. And then it can give me a timeline. And again, it goes back to when it first started out. Of, so students can look at the whole history of it. You know, how did they get this drug launched? You know, again, which companies were involved? Give me the different phases of it. The companies involved as a whole. Again, I can. I'm going a little bit more New York speed now because I know you guys have other plans. By 1:30, I'm trying to get as much as possible. But the point is, I could spend you know 10 hours just on this one section of Bloomberg if I wanted to. And also, there's a great section on government is uh, expanding. And also, all this stuff, by the way, is expanding day to day. Uh, let me just show you one more thing on this menu, too. They actually have something uh, pretty new that they're expanding on, which is um, a disease groups, where they're actually, and they're expanding on these. For example, look at each. Right now, they have asthma, diabetes, hepatitis, multiple sclerosis. They have whole sections on each of these diseases where they'll, you can look at the F epidemiology on this and other factors tells you, again, about the disease, the growth of it, what they're doing to stop it. And this is going to expand. A year from now, they'll probably have about three or four more diseases on there that you know, medical students can study. And let me go into the last part I want to show you again, getting away from finances, the government section, which is pretty interesting. So Bloomberg has its own government section here. And one of the things you can look at is, say, legislation. This will give you some of the main bills, and you could break it down if you want to look at based on industry, defense, or any industry you want. 
It tells you which group is supporting it. Blue would be Democrats, red Republicans. It tells you the stage of it, like this one is marked up in the House on March 20, 2013. It gives you the bill number, the description of it. If you click this, of course, you get more information. Right now it's in committee markup, okay? You can learn the steps to get it to become public law. Right now there's, um, this is just the beginning stage right now. Um, you can see who the co-sponsors are, Barbara Boxer, who's up for re-election. Point is you can keep going into more details on this. Can give you the bill summary. I guess for this bill is pretty new, but let me go back out. I can pick another bill and give you a lot more details. Or if you're interested, say, in defense, you can look at what bills are happening in defense. North Korea Non-Proliferation and Accountability of 2013. Again, same thing. You can see this has a little more support. See who is, and it's right now past the Senate. This one's closer to becoming law. Again, you can look at the whole history of this and bills that are going to be passed. You can also look at the budget. So if we want to look at um, budget highlights, okay, it'll tell you what's happening going forward. Who are the winners and losers? In this case, I hit up the winners. Social Security, of course, uh, part of Social Security is going to be growing. So if you're a government uh, procurement expert and want to start targeting certain areas, you can look at what's going to be growing. Where's your growth industry? You know, what's, and this is one way of looking at it. Okay, Department of Transportation they have growing. You can look at the losers, wh what's being cut back. Unfortunately, Department of Education is one of them that are um, forecast to be cut back a little bit. Um, and then you can also go behind. You can look at, for example, if you want to look at defense, it'll give you a graph of how the defense budget is, okay, versus the non-defense, and it gives you reasons, okay. This is a recession, and these are wars, and you can scroll over it and see how the wars have affected defense spending, for example. So if I highlight over this, it'll tell me the bombing of Iraq and give me the dates of it, okay, and then on the end of when the war ended. So again, it's wonderful graphs that you can expand upon. And also, if you want to see behind the scenes of, of the budget, for example, you can look at um, some more details on here. You can tell me wh where defense versus non-defense budgets are and all that kind of thing. Um, I know that I went a little bit faster because I know we've got to finish by 1.30 and I want to devote some time for your questions. I'm sure you're interested in certain topics. Yes? <laughs> um, application? Uh, I'm sorry, I'm not sure you said is it a client based? Cloud. 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 Oh, cloud? Yeah. Is it straight, um, up, straight off the internet? I mean, straight off a pipe to the internet? Um, yeah, I, I believe so. Actually, that's not my expertise, so I'm, I'm not sure, to be honest. We are on the OCCS network, so we are using the OCCS network for communications. So all the information is coming from um, uh, Bloomberg's databases. We do not have any databases on campus or on any of the machines here. We are just running the application on the machines here. And, and really, these data are proprietary. We pay for them. So any kind of area where they can be exchanged calls into question, can you really do that? Let me give you an example. The Hampton Roads Economic Development Alliance sent a contingent up here recently because they couldn't access data. They were trying to look for firms in Poland to see if they had some affinity with our area and would want to move here. So we provided them with the ability, but they had to physically come here. No clouds, no nothing. They had to come sit here. Why is that? These are proprietary data. So when we purchased all this equipment, it all belongs to us except the keyboard. That allows for exclusion and the selling of the Bloomberg data set. I just had a question about the hours you're open um, for students and whether they can print from in here and things like that. Yeah, we're open. We expand our hours this semester. We're open 9 a.m. to 7 p.m. Monday through Friday and Saturday from 9 a.m. to 3 p.m. And there'll always be someone here than myself. I have three PhD um, candidate assistants that are, always he that are always here also. 
one of them at least. And so um, as far as printing, we're going to be in the process of getting a printer here. In the meantime, those students can upload and then print it you know, wherever they want. So there's no issue with that. And sometimes we even stay later. Like Thomas did a demo. We, we had some students that wanted to, uh, they needed to come very late because they had class. So we even we kept it open past 7 p.m. So we're here to help the students. We want, you know, we want to get this room filled up as many students as possible. And you know, if there's a certain area you're interested in, like we didn't even go into law. There's a lot of other areas in here that we're just scratching the surface of. So you know, we're happy. The, the more different you know venues we have, the more that we learn, and, and the more you know, the more excited you know, the more. The, the better it is for us and, and to share Bloomberg with everybody. The, the printer is here and it's going to be installed very soon. But the students can actually, uh, the, the students can actually save uh, whatever they want onto your flash drive or they can put it on, email it to themselves. Um, any piece of information you see here, you can grab it and simply uh, save it. Uh, the data behind it, you can download it. Um, it, it it's a great tool. Have you thought of using it in strategic planning and corporate policy courses about uh, on how to use this data to support corporate planning and policy decisions? Hopefully, you know, soon we'll be using this to teach strategy as well. Yeah, we've got other stuff going on in strategy. One of the interesting parts of this room is it, that we can't convey to you other than that we're on a timeline and we can't show you everything is how incredibly complex it is. So we've learned from other schools before we put this all together and studied what they had done. It takes about, and I love this number, about two years to really fully utilize it because it is so complex. So the question you just asked, sir, here's the answer right here because he's our professor of strategy and uh, we also have corporate governance issues, the same sort of thing. So the faculty members, have, we have to get the faculty members in here, get them used to the data because this is there's a a big investment that you have to make uh, to really learn how to use the system itself. I was just talking to Ginny, the head of the library, and one of the reasons you can't just put this terminal in the library is guess what? It's way too sophisticated. So even for our faculty members, it takes a while. We estimate from the University of Michigan, from Xavier University, from William and Mary, about two years to really uh, really get ourselves, get the faculty in here, get interested, get our doctoral students in here, uh, get this thing, get this thing moving. Uh, you mentioned the healthcare um, class from health sciences. With all the other applications here, do you foresee the other colleges beginning to offer courses? It sounds like it's going to be a while before, you know, a lot of faculty get through here, but do you see that you know, in arts and letters applications and engineering and, and in addition to the business courses? Yeah, I mean, that's, that's our goal. We, yeah, yeah. It, it, we hope so. We actually, um, uh, the professor that was here, uh, Professor De Leo, he, is, uh, he brought his class from, uh, for, uh, from uh, health sciences here, the PhD class, and uh, they're going to come back here. They, they saw so much data, so much information they could use for their dissertations. I think as, as campus becomes aware of what is in here, I'm pretty sure they, the faculty would develop courses and would, would bring their students here. They, this has applicability to all the fields, all the disciplines. Uh, it's just, again, amazing tool. It's a dream classroom. What is the annual licensing fee, not including the hardware, the annual licensing fee for uh, this room? I can, I, can I answer that? Okay. Um, <laughs> that, that is about $150,000. Um, for each terminal, we pay $1,900 per month, but as education, as education, uh, we get uh, three terminals for free. So the four, total of four terminals, uh, we pay $1,900. You multiply it by six, multiply you know, by 12, so it would be around $150,000. Um, two questions. The first is a quick one. How long does the um, Bloomberg certification um, course take? Yeah, um, again, it depends on, uh, on the ability of the person doing it, but to get about 10 hours, you know, someone who's very sharp and knows it can do it faster, and some people might take a little more time. 
That's, that's the, by the way, just so you know, and I'll just show you it real quickly on here. So it's, Right. Yeah, and so basically what they would do is there's four videos that are basically core videos. Each one is between about 18 minutes each to watch, but of course you probably need to watch it twice to really get it. Once you're done with these four videos, then you take you can take the exam, which takes less than an hour to take. Once you're done with that, then you can become certified. So this gives you the basis. Then there's four different certification videos: equities, fixed income, foreign exchange, and commodity. Each one is a separate certification. Each of these individual videos are about one half hour each. And again, you probably want to watch it twice and, um, and, then, and then take the test for it. So uh, the, the general answer is around 10 hours. And then my second question is, um, obviously your, your track record's short and the market has been very good over the last quarter. But I'm wondering, as time goes on, would you approach the university about managing a small percentage of the endowment fund. I know other universities um, are doing that. Actually, one of the, uh, the, the persons on our advisory board is also heading the committee over there. Um, he, they are have <coughs> promised us they're going to be raising funds for this class, and they are, their goal is to, to reach a million dollars soon. Um, but further than that, I really, I really don't know. Um, it's just we have, we are having so much fun. We enjoy that. that that's a wonderful thing. Yeah. Sorry, is there a, a, a mobile application that goes with this for uh, tablets or iPads or uh, mobile devices? Given that the data is proprietary, proprietary, you have to come here to use it. For mobile application, we actually did this over uh, Christmas break. Um, what, what they did, they have to disable this so we can use it at home, okay? A couple of them, there, so whatever licenses we took. So you have to physically come here to get the data. The mob, you know, if I, if I want a mobile application of that, I have to disable four terminals here, and I didn't want to do that. Thank you, I think we're gonna wrap. Thank you very, very much for coming, and we appreciate it. I, I encourage you to grab, as you, those of you who did not sign in, please do as you leave. There are some uh, sheets there that talk about CLT's Summer Institute, May 21st and 22nd over at the TED. It's a retreat about teaching, and it's something we cordially invite you to. Thank you very much, both of you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.